Uh, okay. My vice needs the support of our zone if he must succeed me. Mm -hmm. And I am counting on you. You know, Mr. President, I cannot refuse anything from you. The VP may bother himself about other zones, but I will deliver this zone to him on a platter of gold <laughs> when the time comes. The political strong man of the people. <laughs> I feel flattered. But... You know, I don't know how you did it, but it was your magic that turned things around for me the last time around. You, you, you seem to have more influence amongst the people, even more than I, the president. Politics. That's politics for you. You're excellent. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I know the language of the people, and that's why they call me the strong man of the zone. You see, if, if, if our zone were still to produce the president, I would have used you for a third time around. Oh yeah, but Your Excellency, on your request, I have transferred that support to the VP. Oh, how is my wife doing on the job? Oh, 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 oh. Wonderful. Wonderful. I mean, she, she is the best special assistant in my cabinet. Really? I'm glad to hear that. Because I've been bothered about her young age and inexperience. Oh, 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 oh no. You know, this, she's, she's coping very well. This, 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 this young generation, they have a way of, of uh, bringing out their strong points. And I must tell you, you have a way of, of fishing, the, fishing the best out of the lot. You can say that again, Mr. President. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Even as if you're about to carry out a coup. There's a man, I am not worried. Then what is it? I'm only thinking of how to go about it. You know, it's not a small venture. And a lot of people are interested in that office, including the vice president. Oh, come on. Stop worrying yourself about who is interested or not. Just focus on your own plans. I mean, you have served this state very well. It's time for you to go out there and prove your worth on the national stage. Or, Osondo, are you afraid? Afraid? Mm. Do you see fear in the eye of the tiger? Agonwam. Of course, you know I'm reporting to the task. Agonwam. Asanam. I'm very happy. And you know how deep your mother is in this game. I mean, I have done it for other people. How much more my own son? Ah. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> it's the one. She never sees to me. Ah. I thought you said you had retired. I thought you made you as come Oh, that's... Well, you have dragged me out of retirement. Why do you think people call me the one? It's because of my business and political prowess. And it's time to unleash it on whoever there to truncate your presidential ambition. <laughs> As one, I know what you do. It is. Yes, I've done anything. Just to get it more.
this tough your mother is next. <laughs> it's the one. I dear boy. We are not in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Still a little bit too early to say. But I foresee Governor Sondo as my possible real threat. Though he has not declared, uh, but he's gathering a lot of momentum. I don't know why you have to worry yourself about the governor that is only ranting. The presidential race is not for upstarts like him. And I don't also see why you should have sleepless nights over all those neophytes who are parading themselves as presidential aspirants. Mr. President, that governor is getting stronger every day. Public opinion show... Look, Idris, what is your business about public opinion? What is your business? What comes here is that I have given you my full support. As my advice, you have been very loyal. And I think that you are capable of running the affairs of this great nation. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you so much. Uh, that compliment is a boost to my ego. <laughs> Don't worry. You see, you have once a scratch to my back. It is now my turn to scratch yours. That is true. That is true. Once again, I thank you. Uh, I, have to be, I have to be going now. I have a meeting of the caucus, the party caucus, in my office. So I'm going to keep you informed of the proceedings. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Thank you very much for responding to this invitation. And I want to tell you that you have been an inexhaustible well of wisdom to what I stand for, even before I became governor of the state. Today, more than ever in my political history, I have called you to seek for your support once again. I want to run for the office of the president of this country. And as my fathers and leaders, I thought it wise that you be the first to know. They will. <clears throat> this is good news, Your Excellency. Your leadership qualities are not in doubt. This country needs a charismatic and visionary leader like you as president. You have my full support. There. Your Excellency, the great son of the soil, our people are proud of you. You have done so well as our governor that it will be malicious for the seat of power up there not to welcome you with open hands. Okay. Everybody care. Strength is in the young. We will march together there to that exalted seat and teach them how people should be governed. Thank you. What is this premature excitement all about? Do you people think that the post of the president is for toddlers? Your Excellency, I will advise you confine your dreams to your age and status. Igwe, I thought we buried your antagonism against him at the last truce meeting. He defeated your son at the general election, fair and square. 
You have to take it in good faith. His Excellency is a better candidate than any of those men parading themselves. No, I don't agree. There are better people outside. Who dodge? Who are even so biased? Eh? Why? I am disappointed that you. He is a better candidate. And we believe in him. Yes, we believe in him. Yes, of course. Ah, Igwe, we we'll dodge him. Melumba, Naji, refuse to dwell in fool's paradise. Your Excellency, call me when you are sensible enough to vie for a seat in the House of Reds or in the Senate. Then you would have my support. Who is he calling himself? Can you imagine this man? Uh, let him go. He is only the chairman of State Traditional Council of Chiefs. If he won't give you his support, his blessing, the rest of us will mobilize the traditional rulers from the other states in this zone. Bawa, it's time for us to produce a president for this country, and you will be that president. Oh, yes. Igwe Jejemba, Gabaku Genazu. My father. I thank you very much for reposing such confidence in me. I will not fail you. Please, don't be in a hurry to leave. I have some um, cola for you to say thank you. Smart. Your Excellency. Everybody give me your Excellency. You don't give me your Excellency. Thank you. Oh, honey, it was lovely. Just that the president had such a tight schedule. I barely had time for leisure. But all the same, it was nice. Well, it's nice to have you back home same anyway. Here. Same here. So tell me, where are you up to? Oh, I am being paid uh, going to attend the uh, send-off party for the Bulgarian oh, ambassador. Oh, oh, yes, it's today. It is today. Do say me well to him. I'm okay. tired. Okay, okay. So, I love you, sweetie. <laughs> so, that's catching. Don't be long. I'll wait for you. Bye. Look at that. See how small in head she is simply because she went to a plan in New Zealand. Being based or being jealous. Omotola is the special assistant to Mr. President on international affairs. That portfolio entails a lot of traveling. Why won't I be jealous, eh? Why you always treat her with professional treatment just because she's your new wife, eh? Am I not a graduate? Or can't I be a special assistant to the president? Or even a minister? Or an advisor? <laughs> you are not only jealous, you are selfish. Omotola does not have have the chain of businesses I have established for you and for me. Yet, you are still complaining. 
Is it my fault that she's not business-minded, Chief? Oh, is it her fault that you are not career-minded? I uh, encourage her along that path. Because she is a career woman. Please, please spare me that. Please. Eh? Just as I encourage you to along your, your, your business uh, exploits. Eh, why don't you keep to your own business? Eh? Oh, yeah, come, let's go, let's go. I don't want to be late. Yeah, let's go. It's hot. <laughs> Did you know that our dear new CC wife, she's not just Mr. President's special assistant, she's also his special. Hey! <clears throat> Bing! Bing! This is dangerous gossip. Where did you hear it from? <laughs> Don't you know Abuja is a small town? Eh? The rumors is everywhere. Listen, Chief Mrs. Agnes Onoja, DG now, Ministry of Information. Mm -hmm. She confided in me. She told me that Omotola and Mr. President lodged in the same room for their last trip to Switzerland. Hey! So after sharing her husband with us, Omotola still goes ahead eh, to catch a phone with Mr. President. How daring. I've always known that all the globe trotting and gallivanting with Mr. President are not ordinary. Chief must hear about this. This is an opportunity to cut that her long tail short. I agree with you. Ever since she entered this house, she's been behaving as if she's the only one that has doctorate degree. After all, we also went to school. And Chief has not been paying attention to us. Hey, hey but come. Who is going to tell Chief? You, of course. Me. <laughs> Dimpe! My darling wife, you know, since you have your way of getting hot chest, you can also have your way of telling chief, not me. Bing 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 bing. Bing bing. Good morning, oh, morning. Yes, yes. Good morning, gentlemen of the press, and it's good to have you here. Uh, I want to quickly put to rest the speculations about my presidential ambition. Yes, I want to run for the office of the president of this country. I believe this country needs a purposeful and dynamic leadership. And these are the qualities I intend to bring to the administration of this country. What makes you think you have pedigree to run for the highest office in the land with so many eminent people also jostling for the position? Well. The caliber of people back in my campaign are men and women of integrity and honor. They are cut across the length and breadth of this country. As for pedigree, I invite all of you to take a tour of this state and form an opinion for yourselves. Sir, is your mother in support of your ambition? We know both of you are very close, but she's not here today. <laughs> my mother is my technical advisor. In politics, like you know, it's a game. In every game, you have the best technical advisor to win a game. I assure all of you, this country is in for the best political game it has ever witnessed. Oh, sir, oh, sir, 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 we all know that the vice president is also running for that same office. And both of you are in the same uh, party. Is there any chance that there will be a compromise between the two of you? Good question. And I like your tie. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, I have a deep and enormous respect for the person of the vice president. And uh, if you say he's running, I will not run. I will pick the presidential ticket while he continues to run. <laughs> sir, sir, sir. I understand that the position of the president has been zoned to the north, favoring the vice president. Are you going to change the rule at the middle of the game? 
Well, that is a figment of imagination, my dear. So the prominent party executive actually suggested that in a recent interview. Well, I want to tell you here, the party has not made any such declarations. In my opinion, I think this concept of zoning promotes uh, mediocrity. We must let the best serve this country. We must let people who have track records of performance serve this country. And in any case, if there has to be any zoning, it will be the turn of our zone to produce the next president of this country. God bless Nigeria. Baby. Baby. Good. Well, I hope Mr. President's shadow this time around will give you the chance to see and feel the whole of Paris. I really want you to see the whole world. I hope so too, my baby. Not to worry. I'll see you in three days time, okay? Okay. Do me food. Yes. Take care of yourself for me. Oh, I will. So, what's their cooking? What's cooking? I wonder who is married to our Miss Universe. My husband or Mr. President. What's that supposed to mean? Pepe, don't you have limits to your jealousy? No, I'm not jealous. But I thought my husband was smarter than what that small girl is presenting him to be. Meaning what? Chief. You are not blind. Omotala is only your wife here at home. Outside there, she is Mr. President personal property. How can both of you be so ridiculous? What kind of stupid insinuation is this? Chief, I am your first wife and I have seen the better part of you. So you cannot accuse me of being jealous. So what? Outside there, in the government circle, the rumor is everywhere that Omotola is Mr. President's new plaything. Has my husband wondered why our Iyawo is only the special assistant that accompanies Mr. President to all his foreign trips? Oh. Get out of my sight, both of you. Uh, my husband. Get out! I am very disappointed in you. Mr. Chairman, if you were not in support of his ambition, Governor Sonu would have had the court to declare for presidency, knowing that I'm running for presidency. I don't know where you got this idea from, Mr. Vice President. As chairman of this great party, I maintain a good measure of neutrality, only tilting a little towards you due to the interest of the Mr. President in your candidacy. Of course, I couldn't deny that the governor spoke to me about his own interest. And you gave him your support. You don't take me for a fool, do you? I'd rather right you don't recognize me. I know how much I have put into the building of this party to bring it to the level it is today. Mr. Vice President, we all know that Governor Sandu is a very gossip fellow. We can't stop him from contesting this election if he so wishes. 
and we don't forget that it is the delegates that will determine who flies her party flag on election day. And um, what is that supposed to mean, Mr. Seto? That I should run a campaign alongside with an ordinary governor? What does he know about international relations? How many, how, how many foreign leaders has he seen his, in his entire life? Does he even know the current chairman of OPEC? I mean, I, I, I don't expect this kind of insinuation from somebody of your caliber. Well, I urge you to take it easy and plan your campaign. What matters? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. You could have, you would have equally preferred on him. To pocket his, he is nonsense, ambition. But what did I get from you? Conspiracy. Conspiracy, Mr. Chairman. Well, gentlemen, from the foregoing, I suggest this meeting should be called off. Right. I right. support it should end. So, Mr. I'll Vice get back to the question. All right. Good day, Mr. Vice President. The Minister of Aviation today announced the revocation of Meridian Airline license. The airline, the minister said, falls short of aviation standards and the decision is aimed at protecting passengers from foreseeable danger. Meridian Airline is one of the new airlines approved by the federal government for domestic air transport. This is people serious. My airline is the most technically certified and competent airline among the private airlines in this country. Oh, how can anyone say? Oh my God, my God. Who is, who is doing this to me? My God. Who is doing this to me? Who is doing this to me? Please, just calm down. This is just our enemies at work. Eh? This is our enemies at work. For an airline that cost me $250 million? My God. I will not let any enemy pull it down. God forbid. God forbid. Just see what your father's presidential ambition is causing us. Eh? Oh, it's okay. There's nothing to worry about. Okay? Oh, There's nothing to worry about. It's okay. It's okay. I believe that he knows what he's doing. Okay? It's okay. said that technical reports say that your airline is defective. What do you want me to do? Allow you kill all our people? Your Excellency, my airline is a George one of the best in this country. And but the experts say it is not so. They say it is not so. What do you want me to do then? Do you want me to believe you or believe the experts? Your Excellency, I'm surprised you sound this way. Have you forgotten so soon how I delivered my entire state to you while you were running for this office? I have not forgotten. I have not forgotten. And you are still going to deliver the same state to the Vice President when he runs for this office. I beg that Your Excellency maintains the expected neutrality on this issue and allow state and party delegates choose who they want. Governor Osondo, I thought you said you came here for the, your airline license. Yes, Mr. President. So I have you decided to lecture me on democratic principles, a subject matter you hardly know anything about. You see, this is why I say that you should learn to respect your elders. Your Excellency, I am not teaching you anything. I am only speaking the interests of those I represent. Oh, very well. Let your people give you your airline license. Good day. I have an appointment with the British ambassador very soon. I beg your excellency to reconsider. I am through with you. 
Thank you, sir. Uh, let him in. Let him in. Your Excellency, meet Sylvia Williams, the lady I told you about. Good. You're welcome. Thank you. Your lady, please do sit down. Thank you very much. I've heard so much about your journalistic prowess. But I never knew you. You're so young and beautiful. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, I also never knew that His Excellency has such an amazing sense of flattery. I like the confident. I told you, Your Excellency. <laughs> good quality for the work at hand. Your Excellency. That's good, that's good. I'm sure Chief uh, Amadena has given you a little bit, no doubt. Quite so. Good, good. We need enough uh, incriminating material to nail the cat completely down. I'm sure you can handle that. I don't compromise people's confidence, Your Excellency. Beautiful. I made available the sum of two million naira. I'm sure that will be enough for mobilization. Well, for now, it will be. You will have your money waiting for in your car. And I trust you do a good job. No compromise. Thank you. Your Excellency. Well, I thank you for coming. Doing business with us, there's nothing you will lose. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Your Excellency, um, in respect of uh, the caucus discussion we had, yes. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. Good afternoon. So you need to see this. A well articulated article on your Mercurial profile, sir. Hmm. <laughs> this is a lovely piece, pals. Anyway, your loyalty has never been in doubt. Sir, actually, I, I didn't arrange that. Um, I think the columnist is just one of your numerous fans out there that you have reached. You mean you knew nothing about this? I told you, um, the writer is um, one Sylvia Williams. But sir, I think we need to use her for your political campaign, sir. You're right. You see, there are still people out there who believe in what I've achieved. That is very correct, sir. And would want me at the centre. I would not disappoint them. Okay. Get in touch with her as soon as possible. We will need her for the campaign. Consider that done immediately, sir. Excuse me. Hmm. Yes, she's making a compelling case for my presidential candidacy. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Hello, sir. I'm fine, sir. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're very funny, Mr. President. Okay. I'll bear that in mind. <laughs> All right, okay, okay, okay. Good night, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, bye bye. <laughs> Honey, Mr. President, it's so funny. <laughs> that is the second time under two hours he has called. Doesn't he sleep? Honestly, I doubt if he ever has up to two hours sleep a day. 
You know he's a very busy man. <laughs> Calling up people's wife late at night. It's not my understanding of uh, official business. And what was all that laughter and jingling about? Is he also a national comedian? Why are you talking like this, Saki? You know how much Anna likes to tease people. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope uh, his wife, Jumoke, also gets equal dose of his clowning. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. When, sir? Tomorrow. Okay, sir. <sighs> Baby, the president is traveling to Greece tomorrow, and I've been detailed to go with him. What? For goodness sake, you are somebody's wife. Why should they just approach you like that from your family, then go gallivanting with the president? Honey, I am sorry about the inconveniences, okay? But you know my work details as his personal assistant on international affairs. So what? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do to make his schedules less impromptu. Not to worry, I won't be away for too long. Before you know it, I'm back. Yes. I want to assure you we will pay as soon as we receive our allocation. Thank you. Yes, come in. Good day, sir. Hello, Sylvia. How are you today? Fine, thank Please you. Please sit down. Thanks. Um, sir, actually, I come to give you this profile so you take a look at it before I oh, take it for publication. I trust your judgment. Go ahead and publish it if you think it's good enough for me. All right, then. Now tell me, how about dinner for two tonight? Sir? Yes. I appreciate the wonderful jobs you've been doing for me. I must confess, you're such an amiable personality with great passion for life. <laughs> Well, Your Excellency, sitting this close with a great achiever like you, I mean, it definitely forces one to be at her best, don't you think? Well, for me, I think it's something more internal. You're a beautiful, young, focused lady. A rare combination you find in most women. <laughs> well, I'll take that as a compliment, Your Excellency. Yes, do. I must tell you something. You to be my mistress. You're kidding me. You are right, Your Excellency. The court has caused its suit against you. Of course, on grounds of immunity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can assure you, this is a big blow to the President's ego. It will unsettle him for some time. Thank you very much. Don't mention. You have been wonderful. Let me run along now. Oh. I only came to break the news personally. Okay.
Who are you? And what are you doing here? Alone? The name is Sylvia. I am the chief publicity strategist for His Excellency's presidential campaign. Nice to meet you, ma'am. You've only answered half of my questions. Well, um, I'm waiting for His Excellency to return. Yeah, let me see you here immediately. So, this office has now become a public loitering place. You throw the doors open to all manner of people, thereby undermining my husband's security, not so? Um, not exactly, madam. See you are here anyway, it's part of our inner working machinery towards the governor's presidential campaign. More so the governor is aware that she's in the office here with him. I see. Yes. It's so obvious that you've suddenly lost touch with your primary responsibilities to my husband, the governor. Perhaps we have to look for a more reliable person. I suggest that you restrict your publicity whatever outside this office when the governor is not around. Is that clear? Good day. Where's my husband? Um, he's receiving some traditional rulers from the States. Uh, he'll soon be with you now. everyone on your campaign team. So how come Sylvia is such a mystery that I had to discover her all alone in the privacy of your office? Since when did you start taking interest in my political campaign team? Look, I have learned to pursue my political ambition on my own and so far I have been doing very well. What I will not tolerate, repeat, what I will not tolerate from you is trying to discourage those who work hard to encourage me. Don't even try to play me for a fool, okay? If she was only a member of your campaign team, how come you left her all alone in the privacy of your office? And eh? where else could she have waited? In the toilet? Now don't you vex me on this issue. This is what I always say as the first lady. You all openly flirt about with every little excuse. I expect me to keep quiet. Well, I'm sure that by the time you are made the president, every young girl in this country must have been a member of your campaign team. You're sick. Very sick! Who are you? Oh, I am Steve, sir. I am standing in for Tunde. He is indisposed for today, sir. What's going on here? 
Who wants you to come? Tunde, sir. Your PA. Tunde. Tunde. How could you send a total stranger to come and drive me? So what? Now listen. You didn't even have the courtesy to inform me first. Now listen. Let it be the first and last time you will do this sort of thing. Sorry for yourself, fool. Why did you branch off the road? Chief, you talk too much. is causing this administration already. Are you suggesting that I'm responsible for Chibakin Jesus' death? Don't give me that. You did not collect, you did not collect five million naira from me to organize a pamphlet for him, did you? I suggest you don't go on pinning this assassination on me. They the governor's camp. But about that, Your Excellency. My goodness. You don't know what political crisis that are on our hand now. If you ask me, I should say, Chief Akinjza's death is good radiance to bad rubbish. Now that is out of the way, I think we should start working on how to regain Mr. President's loyalty. That should be a primary concern now. I hope uh, I'll not be overreactive. But I suggest you take a low profile. Take a low profile until we, have, until we get to the bottom of this very assassination thing, okay? If that is what you want, Your Excellency, no problem. I may even do for that question. Good. Take one. You are not planning to do anything stupid. A time for this calls for great caution. You talk of caution? When my biggest ally from that zone has not been caught down in cold blood? Do you now intend to take the life of Mr. Vice President in revenge? Is that what you want? I will give the Vice President war. Real war. Oh no, my son, you won't. Please, it hasn't come to that. Please. Mr. Wani, why are you so soft on this issue? I thought Chief Ashkenji was your good friend. Yes, he was. But you don't jump into war blindly. Our time will come. All what we need to do now is to calm down and consider all options. That's all. Calm down, okay? You're a man. Calm down. Take it easy, okay? 
Come down, okay? Come down, my son. Sorry. Please, my son. You're a man. Ah! Yes. Oh no worry me. Has no single enemy until you came into this house with your evil act. Yes. Almost alive, you didn't go about opening your legs to the wrong people and at the wrong places. My husband will be alive today. Are you accusing me of chief's death? No. I'm only congratulating you, shameless woman. Now listen, both of you. I have had enough of your insults in this house. I only tolerated you because of the respect I had for my husband. Which husband? Huh? Is it Mr. President? Or the Minister of Works? Or Alaji Lamidi? Which one? Tell us which one. You are sick. What? If you like, eh? Let River Niger or River Benway or even my river flow freely from your eyes. At the right time, you will go and tell all Eba people. Who among your lovers you connived with to kill or not worry me? And as from today, you just started. It is fire for fire. We shall see. I shall wish. Honestly, Your Excellency, we are no longer sure of what's going on at the President's. How do you mean you're no longer sure what's going on at the president? We are all at a loss. There is this strange disquiet between Mr. President and his vice. Things are no longer rosy as they used to be. Are you sure it has nothing to do with Chief Akinjide's assassination? I understand Mr. President feels uh, the vice has a hand in it. It's more than that, Your Excellency. Feelers are that Mr. President plans to throw up another candidate. You have an idea who this candidate might be? Not quite, Your Excellency. My suspicion is that he is another retired military general. My God. My God. They are to forgive. They are to forgive. This military boys. That will completely change the equation. Exactly, Your Excellency. We have a bigger battle on our hands. I said this man cannot be trusted. I will say it. Politics is the name. And they're all players in the game. To get the number one position. Is their ambition. No, he is on. The president expects you to do a thorough job. And when Moaz becomes the president, your son will be made a minister. I want him made ambassador to the United States of America. That won't be a problem also. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, uh, mobilize them. Understand? And uh, give you more hope, sir. Can we score back? To get the number one position, ooh, is their ambition? Mm, the heat uh, is on. My fellow brothers, the race has begun. I have sat, slept, did very well consultation, and found that we have been out of the mainstream of the politics. I found a way, a new light, a new day, and decided to bring you people into it. I don't want to find it alone and consume it alone. No, I want to be able to bring to you people the joy. And what we have to do is just small, small. What is it? 
all we need to do is just withdraw our support for the governor. And those bags there belong to you, my people. Are you trying to bribe us? What do you call bribe? Bribe? I'm only trying to mobilize my people. That's all. Udoji, as the chairman, state council of chiefs, you are expected to lead by example. I am highly disappointed in you, Udoji. You collected money from enemies of progress to destabilize your own people, your own state, to fear for. Don't behave like illiterates. The money in those bags are your share of the national cake. Take it and do what you are told. And that's all. What have you gained since you've been supporting the governor? We are not going to be part of this. We all know that Osondu is the right person to lead this country. Yes. Um, listen, Udoji. I am warning you to remove your monkey hands from the soup before they turn out to be human hands. Udoji. Udoji. No wonder my late father, Igwe Ezani Fobamebe, warned me to be aware of you. Whoever is you are meant to know that Governor Osondo is set to lead our country. Besides, it is our turn to produce the next president. I, Ezani Fobamebe, Igwe Okoli, won't be part of this. Yes, we will not be a part of this evil plot. We will not take your bribe. What are we waiting for? Let's leave. Open up, Babu. Nonsense. Don't take your bribe. You can have your bribe. Let's go. Nonsense. What do you know, villagers? I was only trying to help you people out of your bush. What do you know? No road, no water, nothing, and you. Oh. I regret my association with these people. Oh. Isn't it bad enough that I have lost the chairmanship of the state traditional council? Even the governor now wants to have me dethroned. Mr. President, please save my crown. Igwe Ugaji, you know that there is nothing I can do from this end. Of course, you are aware that the governor or Sandu and I are not the best of friends. And moreover, this is purely a state affair. But that was not the assurance I got. Your Excellency, you are the president. Please, intervene. To a disgrace, Igbo Dodge. You could not perform a simple task of rallying your fellow traditional rulers against the governor despite the hefty uh, mobilization fee you collected. You are a disgrace, I must have to say. I did my best. And uh, then live with your best. We will have nothing to do with you anymore. Uh, Ugaji, I have uh, some other people waiting out there for a very, very crucial meeting. What they are doing will cost the people pain. players in a deadly game most of them are in it for their selfish gain what they are doing will cost the people pain but they don't really care oh what a shame it's a game of lies and deceit full of betrayal I'm going to go to the fundraising dinner. I want you by my side. Don't you think that uh, public outings are getting too frequent? I learned the first lady is raising dust already. Leave Ugoma out of this. You're my mistress now. And the constitution does not forbid me from taking a second wife. 
I'm not particularly enticed with the idea of sharing my man. I can be extremely jealous, you know. And you have to do much more than just asking me to forget your wife. You know what? The first leadership will fit you a lot. So many things would fit me, but certainly not a second fiddle. Because that is what the position of a mistress is. Hmm? That's one sterling quality about your lack so much. You're so sweet, yet so firm. You're right. That doesn't mean that I have agreed to be a second fiddle. Hmm? I'm going to make sure you have a budget and an office. But you're still making our time to go see her, isn't it? That's what I don't want. I don't want to share my man. Don't you understand? You don't want to share your man. But I have a message for you. Leave this town immediately if you know what is good for you. Is that clear? I am not scared, Madam First Lady. Oh, I see. But here is my own little message to you. Very soon. Sharing His Excellency with anyone, nonetheless, you. It is not a dream. I see. You have gods. Not so. Well, let's watch and see. I will give you one last advice. Enjoy your last days as His Excellency's wife in as much peace as you can get. Good day. I'll get you, little brat. Who's threatening you? All I've been doing is trying to help you become a president. And yet all she's doing is threatening to assassinate me for my effort. Uh, calm down, calm down and tell me what this is all about. Oh, it's your wife, your wife. She has threatened to kill me today if I don't run away from town. What? I'm scared for my life. I don't want to sacrifice my life for someone else's interest. I'm, I'm sorry, but you know, I, I, I'm, I'm out of this. Hey, 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 hey. Don't take any drastic decision, okay? But this is more than. No, but. I'm not gonna allow you to come to any harm. I love you so much. And I'm gonna protect you. Alright? I'm scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. They are all players okay? in a deadly game. Most of them are in. For the selfish game What they are doing Will cost the people pain But they don't really care Oh what a shame They're all players In a deadly game Most of them are in it For the selfish game what sort of madness has come over you to have threatened to kill that innocent girl? The same mad bug that beat you to shamelessly sleep with that glorified prostitute. Hey! Oh! You want to beat me? You want to beat me? Oh yeah, go ahead and kill me. Go ahead and beat me. I'd always known that you wanted to kill me so that you go ahead and bring in that imposter over my dead body. Sylvia is going nowhere. What? And listen to me. You are barred from ever entering into my office. You have no business to do with my official duties. And from now on, I am not putting one cover of the state money into that your so-called NGO. Go outside and look for money since you hate the good things that come from politics. So, you are now punishing me because of that hard-faced alone. Now, will you keep quiet before you force me to do more? That girl is more important to my political career than you have ever been. My God! Sondra. And let me warn you, I will personally kill you 
if anything happens to her. Even a scratch. What has come into my husband? That's why we're there. Mm. No, yes, that's right. Uh, that reminds me, uh, Mr. Vice President. So what is this I hear about your strained relationship with Mr. President? Mr. Chairman, your president has undermined my confidence in him. Like you must be aware, your president is planning assiduously to remove me from office. It's not a good development for the administration. We can't have both of you at loggerheads. Besides, it doesn't augur well for a great party. And that is his grand scheme to justify dumping me from the presidential race. But I'm going to fight to the last to remain on course. Your Excellency, I will suggest you sheet your sword and allow the party to handle this matter, if you don't mind. Mr. Chairman, uh, nothing is going to hamper my presidential ambition. Nothing. I just want to be sure I have your support. That's all I want to be sure of. I assure you though, I will only do that which is in the best interest of the party. I know I can always count on you. And I will be speaking with Mr. President immediately. Beautiful. Beautiful. I so thank you so much. I thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Uh, when we talk about friends, people like you who we can count upon. That's right. Uh, just, just keep the flag on. Yes, yes. I will sign those documents. Quickly. Thank you. They're all players in a deadly game. Most of them are in it for their selfish Hello, game. Yes, yes. Oh, about the party primaries. Well, you can see we've been walking around the clock. I rarely have time for my personal needs these days. Yes, well, one of those things. I, I hope to see you this evening, maybe at the club. I hope you're there. All right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, that's okay. Okay, why? Right. Hello, Generals uh, Joshua and Halilu. This is most surprising. You, you didn't announce your visit. Mr. Chairman, we are not here on a costly visit. How do you mean? What? My resignation later? Why? Because we don't want you anymore. You don't want me? Who are the we? Huh? Who are the we? If I may ask, you barged into my office with this most unfortunate document for me to sign. Huh? This is most embarrassing, to say the least. Embarrassing? Yes, very embarrassing. All right, let's see, Mr. Chairman, if this is more embarrassing. You have five seconds to sign this document, starting from now. One, I will sign. Two, I will sign. I'm sorry, I'm for Three, I Thank you very much. You can now go back to your village and enjoy your retirement. Good day. All it takes is the name. And there are players in the game. To get the number one position. Ooh, is their ambition. How am I made enough? You don't look happy. Senna, what is it to be happy about? When my closest political ally, the party chairman, has been forced to resign at gunpoint. I mean, what is it to be happy about? Well, lie. You don't know who to trust in this country anymore. See how your political wings have been clipped by those you trusted. And I know the president must be responsible for this. Of course, who is it? It's him. Who is? I warned you against that president, but you wouldn't listen. All you say is that I'm just a mere woman. 
Just a mere woman who knows nothing about politics. And look how he has dumped you to dance naked on the streets. I have said now, do Allah, do Allah, Bana, so careful him, Magana. Please, I don't want this strong word now. Sorry, my husband. It's just that I'm so upset. So what are you going to do now? I don't know what to do. I don't know. I think I need some rest now. I just need some rest. It's like it's it's lies and I think, I think better go and Full of betrayal and a lot of greed With a lot of power play and high-handedness If you step on animals, please You could be rendered useless it's a place where things are always what they seem to be A place where your best friend could be your worst enemy With a lot of corruption Wow, this is beautiful! Okay. Everything I need is in here Do you know you can actually go places with your talent as a journalist? Don't flatter me, madam you taught me the truth. Oh, but you executed the job perfectly. Thank you. Um, by the way, I paid in the sum of 500000 into your account. So I agreed. Really? Yes. Thank you, madam. That's okay. Let me have the duplicate case. I don't want you to get back into that room again. Okay. The suspicion is getting thick about the day. One last thing. This must be a secret between us. I have your account number, remember? If anything goes wrong, you would lose everything. Oh, nothing will go wrong, madam. Okay? It better not. Thank you. Good night. And black men and deep black secrets are unveiled. But at the end of the day, they're all caught up in this dangerous web they have woven. Take a look at this. My God. These are originals of my credentials. How did you get all of this? Exactly my question. Now, and how did your fake and your authentic certificate get into the hands of a newspaper reporter? Your tax evasion records? Highly incriminating documents are all in here. How could you be so careless? Please tell me. How did you get hold of this? All I can tell you is that one of my senior colleagues who works in the fastest newspaper houses was about trading this to the vice president. He only agreed to sell it to me because of my past goodwill to him. I need to know who did this. Well, I I swore to keep his identity confidential. I don't think that should be your heading. Someone in your house is bent on destroying you. I think that should be your point of focus. Oh my goodness! How could anyone want to sabotage all our hard work? Don't worry. I won't get to the root of this. How much did you pay to get the documents? Two million. That was the least I could bargain for. I'll give you three million naira on your phone. Oh yes? No one else could have smuggled those documents out, if not you, liar. Mama, please believe me. <laughs> Mama, believe me, I'm innocent. I don't know anything about it. This is, this is all a shock to me. Honey, honey, please believe me. <laughs> I don't know what more to believe. Hey, 
that you go this far to destroy my political career is unbelievable. I want your son, didn't I? I've always known she had something up her sleeve, something mischievous. How much more of a saboteur can one's wife be? Ugo Ma. Honey, we have been married for so many years now, with three children. You know that I can never hurt you. You know that. Conniving with my enemies to thwart my political dreams is enough hurt. You should have listened to my mother. That's right. I want you to go in there and pack your things and leave. Hey, um. She will hear from my lawyers. That's my right. Lawyers. Mm -hmm. Please listen now. Mama, please don't. Mama, please do help you destroy my son. Please now, honey. I don't know anything about this. Who is doing this to me? Who is doing this to me? Who is doing this to me? Oh. <laughs> hey, God. Obina, what are you doing here? Why are you crying? So why are you crying? Don't you talk again? Why do you say mom? Now you listen. You must not let any emotions becloud your sense of judgment. What would you do with a woman who has never been in support of your ambition? In whatever way? What would you do with a woman who passes your documents to the press? Huh? Mom may not have been that supportive, but you should have sent her away. You must not be lily livered. Now you, get inside. Listen to me. The son of a tiger does not eat grass. A tiger does not beget a he goat. I'm the tiger. You must be a man. No sentiments. No emotions. You must not be lily livered. I did not get to this position I am today by being chicken hearted. Be a man. Now go inside and find something better to do. and the people is to our advantage. You know, the emergence of General Maozo has really divided their lot. But that has nothing to do with us because public opinion says that no other military man should come in. So you must leave all this for a while. I only believe you're aware of my present marital status. Mm -hmm. Just like everyone else. I heard it from the grapevine. Though you haven't told me yourself. The more is the way I call for this drink, so I can see them talk. I want you to go and wine. What? Oh, you must be joking. You're joking. I'm not joking. You have all the qualities of a first lady. Well, I... I don't know what to say, honestly. Um, I think I, 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 I need some time to think about it.
just proposed to Sylvia. Good evening, ma'am. We plan to get married immediately after the election. Oh, sassy. Oh, come on, come on. Come on, you're How are you, my dear? Thank you, ma'am. Oh, you have my blessings, my dear. I mean, your passionate drive towards my son's aspiration is more than commended. I knew you would like her. Of course I do. I mean, look at her. She is a better candidate for first lady than a Goma. I wish I knew her years ago before I married Ogoma. Oh, no. You would have been committing <laughs> child abuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mama, okay, want to go upstairs and have a rest? Yeah, and I'm waiting for a meeting. All so right, I'll man. see you guys when I come back. All right, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then we are beginning to doubt your loyalty. We have not heard from you in the past one month. Are you sure you have not fallen into Governor Sosondo's charm and good look? And that boy could be very slippery. Sir, I am a professional. Besides, I have seen several charming men in my life. It's just that there's nothing significant to report. Be careful, young woman. We pay you so much money to report what you're supposed to report to us. You know I don't take kindly to betray us. I know that. Good. You can leave us for now. She thinks she's smart. What did you think, Amadio? Liquidation, of course, Your Excellency. But we could. Uh... Your Excellency, that is the standard treatment to spy that defects. Well, Your Excellency. I will take care of her. Nice and easy, Your Excellency. Good day. They're all players in a deadly game. Most of them are in it for their selfish gain. What they are doing will cost the people pain. But they don't really care. Oh, what a shame. Sonda, how is she? <laughs> She's dead. What? God, how could anyone kill such an angel? No. This was how I lost Chief Akinjide. A strong pillar in my political train. I wanted to meet his killers with the same fire, but you wouldn't let me. Now, what do you have to say about this? <sighs> no! Mr. Boy, make no mistakes about this. I will revenge serious death. Yeah. Oh. 
That's the one. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. That's the one. You're welcome. Thank you. Please sit. This is a surprise visit. I have heard so much about your political prowess. I must comment that you are an Amazon. Oh, I am flattered by the course, Mr. Vice President. Thank you. Thank you. So, what do I owe this great honor? Yes. I'm sure you're not aware of that, but for me, you won't be the Vice President of the Federal Republic today. As am I. I was trained not to insult elders. Please, don't let me lose that tradition. Didn't it surprise you that amongst all politicians jolting for vice presidency, you were just picked, even when you did not indicate interest? I had enough of this nonsense. Not yet. Not yet, Mr. Vice President. I have a simple pose for you. And if you are able to unravel it, I assure you, my son will announce his withdrawal from the race first thing tomorrow morning. You are not serious. Across my heart, with my life I am. So, I'm listening. Interesting. Somewhere in a little town called Castanala, in the mid-50s, a little boy was born to a young girl of 16 years from an evil extraction, a tribe considered unacceptable to the family of the boy's father, a union that ought to have been, but never was, yet is. That boy today represents a strong bond that should have threatened both tribes, yet he is not. It's a mystery that ought not to have been revealed, but for the present volatile situation. Who do you think that child is Mr. Vice President? I, I don't understand. Then my son will not step down for you. What are you driving? You are that child and I am your mother. What kind of cheap black man is this? As one I hold you in far more great esteem than this. You are my son. And by stroke of fate, my only two sons are engaged in a fierce battle for supremacy. As why don't call me that again. I am not your son. Please. Idris. Idris. That's what your father called you. And I want you to step down for your younger brother. I have had enough of this, please. Out of my office. All right. Get out of my office. Okay, okay, okay. I will leave, but I will be back. And then the story will be clearer. Have a pleasant day, my son. Closer friends that we could imagine. I am working on a truth. 
Believe me, I know what I'm doing. No way, Zawani. If you're contemplating that I also will step down for the vice president, then forget about it. I'm too far from it. I only went there to tell him some truth he needed to know. What truth? When that time comes, I'll let you know. For me to have come down to your country home while you're on leave mm. means that the match is very serious. Sure, so I, I, I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. But you see, you know I have tremendous respect for you. But asking me to go for presidency at this point in time is something I have never given any consideration to. Aren't you the governor of this state? Sure, I am. What other experience do you need to move up to the next level? No, we're not talking about experience here. Yeah? The fact is, Governor Osando has been tipped for that position. Tipped by who? Is he more qualified than you? Or any other governor in this zone? Tell me. Well, of course, no. We're not talking about qualification here. But the fact is that he declared first. So the rest of us decided to, to back him up for the presidency. Governor Baker. You talk like a political neophyte. Check out your profile. How could you allow yourself to be blackmailed into oblivion by a mere pack of five governors when you have the backing of Mr. President and all the influential governors in the country? That is precisely the point. Yes, because I know you are solidly behind the vice president in his quest for the top job. So how come you are pushing me for the same position? I knew you were smart. Here is the game plan. You have been picked as the vice president, but you declare first as the presidential candidate to divert people's attention from Osondo. But when the rest hustle, up, <laughs> you withdraw. And the vice president announces you as his running mate. That is the game plan. <laughs> that is the game plan. I am sorry to disappoint you, Chief. Amadeo, I can't fall for that. Yes, I, Dr. Obaka, cannot go for a second fiddle. If I'm going for the presidency, then I am going for the presidency. Besides, the sentiment in this part of the country is that we must produce the next president. And you and I also know that that is not possible. I, Chief Collins, am at your hand. I am not a dreamer. And I suggest you wake up from your slumber. We take what is available. We are the winning team. And I'm asking you now, Dr. Baker, to come along. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, um, <laughs> sounds reasonable. Um, see, just give me, um, give me some time to think about it. My leave expires in two days' time, and I'm going back to the government house on Monday. I will make some consultations, and I'll get back to you. Now you're talking. Sounds reasonable. Your Excellency, <laughs> that is my baby. <laughs> Chief Collins Amadeo. Governor Maka. Sounds reasonable. Your Excellency. <laughs> you see how far you are there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Your Excellency. Oh, I'll yes. see you. Oh, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> huh? I am shocked by your betrayal of confidence. You gave me a chance. Oh, yes, I did. But situations have since changed. Oh, yes. I have also received a barrage of pressure from all around the country to contest. Lies. Lies. I am sure you have been bought over by the vice president camp just to destabilize me. Well, you can believe whatever you like. But what I will not tolerate is insulting me in my own house. You are a governor. I am a governor. A governor what is all should learn to stick to his words. I don't owe you any allegiance or sound, do I? You did not contribute anything to my elections. And by the way, what makes you think you are the messiah of this zone? 
Please, leave my house. All right. We shall see. We shall see nothing, Osanda. Absolutely nothing. Look at one of your prisoners. Nonsense. I do. 